Hey there. Um, Cut off in a city Discord, also known as Evil in Theory. Um, this is just a general update video, plus I'm going to go through my um, vinyl collection just to show off what I have for fun. Um, it's um, a collected from mostly thrift stores, um, also a secondhand record shop, and a normal record shop in two off the internet. Those ones will be probably a little obvious once I get to them. These are also my newest. Excuse the noise. I'm kind of in the basement alone. All my cats about. They're not my cats, my family's cats, but whatever. Now, this one's from Ark. Uh, it's kind of an interesting one. It's Paul Horn's Inside the Great Pyramid. Um, it's a 2LP doohickey. Um, um, it's actually quite an interesting record. Um, this dude, Paul Horn, went inside the Great Pyramid and plays the flute different kinds of flutes um i haven't given it a full listen yet but the about side one is really interesting stuff so uh, listening all the way to side four is definitely going to be an experience the ambience in the great period is quite interesting and side you know, these aren't in like in no particular order it's just how they're stacked inside my little crate here this one's another one from ARC. Um, uh, demonstration record of stereo. Holiday New York. With Dr. Harlow White, your stereo host. Um, it's just audio and some music as well. From New York. From, let's see, what is this? What year is this? This was... Hmm, when was this pressed? This was at least before 1959. So it's a bit of an older record. Quite interesting, and I'd like to sample some of these audio recordings in my future albums. Speaking of future albums. Um, that's kind of next on my plate, to be honest. Um, I'm planning on working on another back to, back from, another back based, excuse my arm, another back based um, album, like my previous Back From Earth, Back To The Moon. Um, trying to work on a third one, make it a trilogy. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to be made or released. That's kind of like on the forefront of my mind. Um, the next album, I got this at uh, um, Black and Red, the local Colorado record shop. It's Win. This was in their uh, Noise Avant Garde section. Um, and they put on, as kind of like a caveat, on their. Um, uh, avant-garde as in they said could be considered normal nowadays which I find that interesting but this was gave this a good listen um, it was kind of interesting stuff um, kind of neat it did actually come with a poster though the album was already open at the shop uh, it's called it's by the band Win uh, Tears Baby. Just gonna pop on a few seconds of it. Oops. Kind of interesting. Uh, 
I'm not sure exactly what makes it avant-garde. Maybe it just happened to be over there. In the avant-garde section, somebody didn't put it away correctly. Now this this is a 80, 85 through 87 release, so it's not too old. I wouldn't consider that sound avant-garde for the 80s. That's pretty standard. It's kind of interesting. It does say this record was pressed in the UK. That is cool beans. I dig anything UK. Because, hey, it's the UK. Um, the next vinyl. Now, these are all the ones from my local record shop, Black and Red. Now, this one, I think, is special. Because the guy at the record shop got really excited about it when I checked out it with him. It is from Sleeping Bag Records. Uh, not exactly sure what makes Sleeping Bag super important. Um, he made it to the, the, the guy at the record store. So that, it was, that they, their records are a little rare. And people like to collect them. But this was it's kind of a fun little jazz song, I believe is what it was. Kind of jazzy. Um, very sampleable. I will probably sample that somewhere um, in my stuff. Now, don't you all go looking out for it. Cheeky links. Um, but yeah, if it is as special as the guy at the checkout stand tells me, I hope it's worth more than $3 like I paid for it for. Um, So you know, I'm using my crappy little Crosley. Uh, um, yeah, I need a better, better vinyl player at some point, but it's cheap. I got this little 45 here, and it is on one side the Star Wars theme with the Cantina band on it, and the other side is funk. Now these are it is a cover um, by. It's from the album Star Wars and Other Galactic Funk. I uh, hear. Um, produced by. It's Miko. M E C O. I think I was getting it real close. It's a fun little version of the Star Wars theme. Uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah, that was actually from Mark. Um, it's a fun record. Fun little 45. Now, this, this is communique from the weatherman. It's actually some, like, hardcore business here, dude. Uh, I was actually really excited once I put this on my record player. It's, like, some legit business. No oh, whoopsie, but yeah, it's it's some really interesting business. Yeah, it, it it's actually like kind of a a, a interestingly enough kind of like a twelve inch uh, vinyl that is like a single. That's actually was side two. Probably should have played side one. But it's kind of interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I've never seen a 33 that's a single. Now this is like my pride and joy. Mainly because of just how unique this is. This is uh, cons con constructate is I think how you pronounce it. Um, this is a LP that is actually a c it has a CD in the center and then an LP built around it. The LP itself is clear with like kind of like smoky texture and text of the album, which is live from under the ashes. Um, or, excuse me, a live coal under the ashes. Now, I wasn't really aware that, like, like how that vinyls were, like, well, this kind of fancy vinyl was cool in 91. But I guess it was. It's really cool. Um, the problem is, is that because it does have the correct size for a pin in the center here, you can't really place it on this correctly. I don't have a washer that or at least I haven't looked for a washer that would make it fit. So I'm a little worried playing the vinyl part of it. I haven't played a CD part either because I don't want to take it out <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah this is really rad piece of art on its own just in case to be honest. Now this is uh band called What Noise, which is kind of a fun name. This is UK as well. The album's called Fat. It's a kind of like a interesting, like, gosh, what was, what was the genre style? I was just listening to this a couple days ago. But, yeah, I'm probably holding my vinyls wrong. You can judge me as much as you want. Yeah, this is this is like industrial stuff. It's kind of cool, but like I looked uh, online to try to find more of this band's music, and they don't seem to exist on the internet. Um, so that makes me happy, to be honest. This is from '90, from Brave Records. Um, I did look up one of the other record companies related to this was a little it's called One Little Indian Records. They have a YouTube, so the company still exists, but maybe the band doesn't anymore. Now these ones just these ones are my recent purchases. I'm not gonna go too far into them, but yeah, I own Death Grips, No Love Deep Web, which I'm not going to take out of its case because this is YouTube. And they won't let me show a dick on the internet. And Death Grips, the money store. Which I have in its wrapper still. Uh, but yeah, these are some beautiful records. Glad to own them. The one thing was, is that the money store one is a little murky. And it don't, doesn't, I don't think it was mixed correctly. Um, for vinyl. But, what not... Ultravox Quartet. Haven't given this one a listen yet. Which is going to be a lot of these. Like, I've given them a few minutes of a listen, but not serious 100% all the way through. This the Humanly Dare. Um, Gene Chandler's Get Down. Which I'm going to say I'm a smidge annoyed with how this was put on an arc. It, it, it has had this plastic sleeve, but they stuck the sticker on the actual vinyl. So I'm like, that's annoying. Bobcat, cat got your tongue. This this one actually doesn't have a Wikipedia page. Though Bobcat has a Wikipedia page, but this particular album does not. I was one of the things that's kind of interesting about this is the sleeve has its. Uh, uh, the lyrics and like this bro has like a fursona going up here. I don't know. It's kind of funny It's got his furry fursona going on But yeah, 
I, lo I love this the back cover. It's fun. Now this one, this one is Walt Disney's Multiplication Division with Jim Cricket and Rika Moore. This is kind of interesting to own. Some classic educational audio. E.T. soundtrack. This is actually a local record, uh, which is Country Harvest. Now, I'm not a big fan of country, but it's, it was pressed by the local um, uh, country station, KYGO, which is still the current country station out here. So it was published in 85. And it's, I don't know any of these country singers, to be honest, but, yeah. I guess Kenny Rogers, I know Kenny Rogers, and maybe Lee Greenwood, but, but yeah, that, got that. It's kind of cool to own local stuff. Now, what was this vinyl that came in this? Oh, the Sticks album, which this, this is like fun part man probably should have skipped over this one for three bucks this thing is falling apart uh oh yes vinyl sound effects this was from valentino corporate well thomas j valentino incorporated it has 20 sound of well 16 on side 16 sound effects on side a 20 on side b Again, this is going to be some cool stuff to use in some of my um, audio productions. Excited for that. Um, selections from Tarkowski's Romeo and Juliet and Wagner's. I, uh, I'm not going to even try saying that. And Stowski. It's, it's conducted by Stowski. Okay. Yeah, just some good old classical and this is yet another sound effects this is actually volume 8 of a of a selection um, I only got there was a whole bunch of these at, at the, at the uh, 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 thrift store and I decided to go with one just because I didn't want to overdo and it's got this is supposed to be somebody eating a carrot nice um, so there's a lot of sound effects on here uh, you'll probably find more current higher quality versions but hey vinyl just like get, get the hipster mode going on dude now this is where I got for my second hand shop um, you might recognize this from a more popular video on my channel NRL slow motion really great marimba album now, let me get that better in camera uh, yeah a really great album uh, just some great old kind of 80s stuff going on here it, it, it's just nice just nice chill music now this isn't a vinyl it's actually a laser disc I don't have a laser disc player I really should not have paid for this but I paid two bucks so I could have a laser disc just because I am such a fucking nerd you might recognize that I use a laser disc in my never-ending theories uh, product pictures and that's what that was now this, I love the word on this, a nation busi business executive disc. It's a how to communicate your ideas. Um, so really, this is like the weirdest freaking thing I would ever think I'd see in vinyl. Um, Self-help audio, but I shouldn't be surprised to be honest. But yeah, I'll sample the hell out of that. Billy Idol's Rebel Yell. Now this, again, is some great 80s style jazz um, lounge music. 
Michael, well, wait, it's just his name, sorry. Alan Michaels Lost in Asia. Now, this thing looks like it's actually been around for a bit. <laughs> 99 cent written in the marker up here. Um, but yeah, it's. Yeah, it's just kind of a nice album. Now, again, at the. At the. Uh, at the. Gosh. Gosh. What is it? Thrift store. <laughs> there was a whole bunch of these promotional used records for various bands. This one's for uh, Young Ones, I Try to Tell Ya. Uh, in Dirty Version, the Dirty Version a cappella, the Clean Version in the Instrumental. So that's kind of cool. I'm not sure why there was, there's like at least 50 of these in various songs. I have a few more in here that we'll get to. Now this, this is some cool stuff. This is uh, One Stormy Night, played by Myst Mystic Moods Orchestra. Now this is some cool stuff, dudes. Um, it's um, orchestra music. Uh, while that was recorded, uh, and then they also made music to go with it. Um, let me just throw this on really quick. That is my freaking aesthetic, dudes. Um, music and music and um, field recording together as one. It's just nice, 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 nice. It is a beautiful listen. This is one of the few I've actually listened to all the way through. I'm really glad I own this. It is from '72. So really, sometimes when I think that something's kind of you know avant-garde or something, but no, this is this is this one, this is normal, I guess. <laughs> Rushes, moving pictures. Uh, what is this? Uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood. Uh, welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Uh, Queens News of the World. This. This is something else that's kind of interesting. That's Jazz. Um, Art of Improvisation by Rick Matheson and Jack Presterson. Um, it's actually supposed to be um, um, like a helper kind of deal that allows you to practice your uh, own improvisation. The rhythm section is recorded on the left stereo channel and the melodies and solos are on the right. So you could you could record your own improvisations over them. It's kind of an interesting idea to help you learn jazz phrasing and patterns. Interesting. Uh, missing person spring session M Blondie E to the B Thompson Twins here's to the future days I'm gonna say this is just a fun album cover um, Moody Blues a question of balance this really isn't my audio aesthetic but the cover is definitely my visual aesthetic very interesting Here's some more of those uh, uh, single dealios. This is Trick Daddy featuring Ludacris and Silo. Sugar, give me some. And on the other side, J O O D. I hope that like, you can see these. Because I'm using my really crappy webcam on my laptop. 
This is Alicia Keys. It's Karma and the Regatron mix featuring Bimbo. It actually has both the Spanish, Spanglish, and oh no, I guess Spanish and Spanglish versions. Interesting. On both sides. Um, Wyclef Jean, Party Damascus, featuring Missy Ellis, with the main version, a cappella, main, the main version with intro and the instrumental. Uh, then we got Alicia Keys, Karma, with various mixes on it. And Sly Boogie, it's nothing. And John Carvey's album. I'm not sure. Oh, I won't be home tonight. Um, fun, uh, fun cover. Not exactly my audio aesthetic. Was this the one? No. This is uh, music to read James Bond by. It's actually just a various amount of songs from the James Bond films. And a few, just a couple other songs that aren't from James Bond films. Now this was actually one that was kind of sucked. This is the, this is a sleeve, which claimed it was like piano versions of Star Wars and various other things. But no, actually on the inside... The actual album are is is the same uh, same group, um, Ferrante and Triker, but it's actually tenth anniversary of Golden Piano Hits. Now I don't mind; that's cool, but it's like I wanted Piano Star Wars to be honest. Now you've heard part of this actually, and a couple other of these vinyls. Um, in my uh, album Back to the Moon this is one of them aerobic dancing uh, I probably plan to sample more of this but it's such a weird album just listening to the man kind of just drone at you telling you to do exercise well, he's obviously sitting down uh, disco hits with village people and various other disco stars this one is also a kind of cool local deal. This is from 1970. Well, recorded Sunday, January 25th, 1970 at 3 p.m. It's actually the 1970 Denver Public Schools Citywide High School Concert Choir. It's pressed to vinyl for some reason. It's kind of cool. Uh, to be honest, the songs are various religious songyos, which is cool and all. Uh, but it's like, why was this pressed to vinyl? It just seems interesting. I guess that'd be similar to asking a question of why, why are graduations recorded and sold to their parents? But still, that's just interesting. Now this is was also heard in Back to. The, it's the 1988 Summer Olympics album, One Moment in Time. Um, it's kind of a damaged record, but it's still kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It's actually stamped down in the corner here. Um, that, that's loaned for promotional only. For promotion only. Not for sale. Ownership and all rights reserved. So okay, that kind of makes me think, I probably actually shouldn't own this. Cool. <laughs> now here's a handful of 45s uh, Expose Let Me Be The One 9.9 uh, .9, I Like The Way You Dance The Firm The King's Horses Giorgio Tina Cherry and this is actually a really cool uh, thing to own. It's actually a 45 of music from Japan. Kind of neat. Um, it's The whole deal is written in Jap Japanese. It actually came 
from the thrift store with a 45 um, uh, deal in it. So I've left it in it. Uh, let me just play for you a smidgen of it. Um, but yeah, it actually has a dance that is written in it too. So this is kind of exciting to own. I wish I could, I knew Japanese. So I could understand what they're singing and what is written here. But being just the lame American, I mean, no English. It's a mystery. And one last little vinyl treasure is actually probably not vinyl. It's actually a whole uh, binder of classic records of Victorola records to be precise. Um, really old stuff here. I occasionally wonder if I should actually be holding it. Well, this is like stuff that's still printed that the uh, trademarks and patents were made in 1895. So this is some original stuff here. Um, yeah, and there's a good handful of records in here. It's most of it's opera. And I think it's a privilege to own some of these. Yeah. That really, this video really hasn't been about updates about my music. I'm probably just going to make a separate video for that. But yeah, that's my record collection. Ah, goodbye before this video is too long.